Brother Jeremy's sermon text is Ro Romans 12. They are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. I would like to pray for Brother Jeremy before he comes up. Our dear Heavenly Father, th thank you for this day. And help. I pray to you that Bro Brother Jeremy will have strength to speak as he comes up, and everybody will have ears to hear. And in Jesus' name, amen. amen. For those of you that haven't memorized the entire Bible, that was Romans 3, 12. You could go ahead and turn to your Romans 3, 12 now. <clears throat> Apart from Christ, the entire race of men, starting with Adam, have been completely corrupted. So what are we going to do about that? What, what can we do about it if we didn't even know that this was the situation? We had no idea yeah. what was going on. But the Lord did. See, brother, we, let me just start off with saying we serve a good God. Amen. He's a good and merciful God. He cares about his people. Now I'm going to be, I had him read Romans 3.12, but I'm going to be covering all the way down to 18, so if you want to stick with me there, because... I just couldn't stop. I started, get, I started going here, and it just all kind of fit together in my, in my mind what the Lord was doing here. It, God is showing us here that we are in a situation that we cannot help ourselves. And he's made every opportunity. He has made every opportunity for us to help ourselves if we could. He, he made a people and gave them a law and made them, set them apart. That wasn't good enough. And, and he, the, he, he made an opportunity of time. He gave time. And what did, what did we do with time? We made things worse. Yeah. Uh -huh. And right here we're seeing here that just, just in case yeah. someone mm -hmm. may think that, that they're doing pretty good, yeah. the Lord just, get, just laid out for us here. Right. He said, there is none good. There is none good. No, not one. Just, just, in, just in case you couldn't catch on. You weren't fast enough to, to catch on to what the Lord was doing. He's just going to have to go ahead and just lay it out for us. He's going to say, you need me. I am your God. There is no other God. And if you want to get to where I am, because that's where I want you to be with me. That's how I've set it up. You have to trust in me. Every part of man's nature has been completely defiled by sin. Sin has done a thorough and complete work in men. Complete, brethren. For, there are, I'm telling you, there are still people who say, well, and, and this recently brought this up, I've, I've always been a Christian. My mom and dad, they took me to church every day. Listen, this is for each and every one of us. Uh, I was listening to Sister Logan, and she was talking about, she said, you all know my background. Does everybody know her background? Let me tell, her, tell you her background. She was brought up in the church from day one. Other than when she was trying to lose weight one time, and she didn't tell, her mom said, did you eat your cereal? And she said, yeah, I ate my cereal. She was convicted so bad, she has to run and pray for her when she was younger. This is her major thing that she, she, would, she had problems with. But, see, she's tender enough to know. This is our background, brethren. Our background is we are born into sin. And without God, there is no one good. Now, everybody may have different stories of how Satan has worked in different ways. But we can all come together and say, I am not good enough to stand before my God. In glory. Not without Christ. Yeah. One transgression mm -hmm. is what took down the whole entire race. Yeah. Yeah. Adam had only sinned against God one time. And that was enough that he could no longer 
be in God's presence. He had only transgressed one time. The Spirit of God working through Paul is showing us that man left on his own cannot come to righteousness and cannot stand before God holy and righteous and be in his presence. Now, this may sound offensive to some for me to say this, but that's because sin is offensive. It's offensive to God. They're all gone out of the way. They're all together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. More time doesn't help the situation. Unprofitable or worthless, as it says. No. Worthless. What does worthless mean? Is that, does that mean they're no good, but there's some a little bit good? There's a little bit good in it. Worth. What do you do with something worthless, brother? When something is worthless, what do we do with it? We throw it in the trash. We get rid of it. There's no good in it. It's hauled away to the landfill, and it gets covered up. They take big, here in, in our country, I know we have brethren from other countries that things look different, but when you take it to a landfill, it's done. You're not going to use it anymore. They call it garbage. No good. It's unprofitable. But see, brother, we were made for God. We were made for God's use. We were made to be profitable. See, sin is, is taking something that was made to be profitable and made it unprofitable. Yeah. Amen. <coughs> we were made, it's like a, made, we made, we, we're like, makes God nauseous to be around us because of the situation of sin. You know, something is rotten. And we see this here. It says, their throat is an open sepulcher. That's verse 13. So that's like stench. It ruins everything. I knew a guy that used to, his job was to go in and clean houses out after somebody died and been sitting in the house for a long time. So he had to strip everything. He had to repaint it. And he said, even then, there's a, if, you have a, if you know what you're smelling, even then you could smell it. There's, a, there's something about rottenness. See, that's what we are to God. Before we came to Christ, and there was nothing good about it. Rotten, stench, useless. From Adam until now, men were rejected by God. And there is no profit in them apart from Christ. So when people say that God loves you just the way you are, now that changes things when you, when you can see this clearly. That changes things, doesn't it? When somebody says, God loves you just the way you are. Don't worry about it. This simply doesn't make sense. <coughs> On any type of sound reasoning, does it? God is not going to take something that's unuseful and say he loves it. That's, it. that's just ridiculous to even talk like that. That is not even our God. If anything and everything he does is for a reason, and everything that he has is profitable. So what is love? Herein is love that we loved God, but that he, not, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be a propitiation for our sins. 1 John 4, 9. So if God just loves you just the way you are, Rotten and stenchful, no good, you, worthless and without. Then why did he send his son to die for us? Yeah. It's because, brother, we we're worthless. And to be made worthy, to be made acceptable, to be made for his use, yes. well, we needed a savior. Amen. We needed somebody to be made sin, yes. to, to be the container for sin, to take away sin. Because right. sin could not be in his presence. We could do nothing about our situation, but God could. And he did. But I, I say, but God could. Yes. And he did. 
See, we would like to do something about certain situations, but we have no power to do it. But God, he has the power. Not only he has the power to do something, he did it. Yes. Apart from Christ, we are worthless, brethren. And this is love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. 1 John 4, 17. Is anybody going to have boldness without Christ on the day of judgment? No one's going to have boldness because we've all come short. We're all unable to stand before our God. See, this is a great work that God's doing. He has changed us now so that when we go there, he's not going to have to cast us out. The only reason, the only reason he's able to say, well done, good and faithful servant is because he is changing us now. He's making us acceptable now. So we see that this doesn't take a lot of thought to see that this love that we that God has is that He's not going to leave us just the way we are. He's going to make us. He's He's going to make us acceptable. God's nature would not allow Him to be in the presence of something that's worthless, sin. That wouldn't be love. Are you telling me God loves us so much that he just wants to cast us out of his presence? That doesn't even make sense. It would not be love for God to leave us in our worthless state. It was his love that he sent his son so that we wouldn't be left in this hopeless situation. Not leaving us in a worthless and hopeless state not leaving us. Now that's love. Sin made all of humanity worthless to God. Useless. But God wasn't going to leave it like that. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. That covers everybody. See? It doesn't matter what you say you are, who you say you are, or what God you say you're following. You are useless because you can't even do anything good. Apart from Jesus, none doeth good. Or can, even if they wanted to. Let's say they even wanted to. They can't even do it, but they don't have the want to do it. See, God even gives us the want. It's him that gives us the want to do good. You want to do good, that's because God gave it to you. You want Jesus Christ, you want to be saved, you want to be born again, you want to be useful for the kingdom, that's because God gave that to you. See how good our God is. In Christ, we are overcomers. Romans 3, 4 talks about this. And that on judgment day, we can stand before God with confidence. Someone may say that, they are good, that they lived a good life, that they did good, good to others, that they, they will be good enough to be before God. See, they're, they're making a judgment call on what they think is good. But see, we're reading right here what God, God's already made a judgment call on the situation. Here's the situation whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. We see that today. Mask murdering. And you say, why? Why would this is this doesn't make any sense? This is because this is what sin does. This is what flesh, when it when it's just let loose, Amen. this is how it acts. Yes. Destruction and misery are in their ways, yeah, yeah. and the way of peace they, they know not. Right. They, they don't even know what this means. Yeah. They can't even comprehend it. Mm-hmm. But see, this is what sin does. Yeah. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Oh, see, God is a God to be feared. Mm -hmm. Why wouldn't somebody fear God? It's because they're blinded. Mm -hmm. Sin has caused their heart and mind to be blinded before God. They can't even see the dangerous situation they're in. But see, brethren, what we're seeing here Uh is that God has made us sensitive to him. God Mm -hmm. has opened our eyes. 
God has opened our ears and he's made our heart soft so that we can see him. If your heart is soft, you will fear God. Because you'll know the situation that sin can't be in his presence. Whatever you think about yourself, God places you in the none category apart from Christ Jesus. No good. Worthless without Christ. To God, you, are only, you only count as long as you're in Christ Jesus. So this is where we want to stay, in Christ Jesus. To some, this may be strong language. This is because of the hardness of the hearts. It's because of sin, brother. But to those who are sensitive to God, this is not strong language. We can rejoice in that we have a Savior Amen. and that he has made us acceptable. This is sweet language to the brother. As we consider our condition, I said as we consider our condition that we are in before Christ, this makes Christ very appealing. Amen. And the thought of falling away, fearful. Yes. And the thought of standing before our God, fearful. Until a person sees the condition that they are in, they will not see Jesus to be appealing. Yeah. We had no righteousness of our own. Amen. But to be with God, we needed to be righteous. Yeah. We needed his righteousness. Uh -huh. You know, brethren, we've talked about the tornado that came through, and I want to share real quick with you about this situation. For a split second, when my house was coming down on top of us, and I knew I was going to die, for a split second, I had this fear that came over me to stand before my God, and my heart was pounding. But then I thought about Jesus, and I had a peace. Yeah. In the middle of my house being blown away uh -huh. and nothing to protect me uh -huh. but Jesus. Amen. I thought about how Jesus calmed the storm. Yeah. Amen. I thought about Jesus, how he was so sensitive mm -hmm. that he cared about his people while he walked on this earth. And I thought about him who took away sin, who was going to be standing there on judgment day. Yeah. And that's where I found my peace. Mm -hmm. I didn't have fun peace. To be able to stand before my God alone. But God isn't going to be, make it so that we're alone. He's, going to, he's, going to, he's, been, he's made it so that we can stand with Christ. Amen. We're overcomers because, it's because we're in Christ Jesus. Amen. We had no righteousness of our own. But with, with God, to be with our God, righteous. And holy and perfect, that was what needed to be done. And in Christ we are not as we think that we have our own righteousness, but it's God's righteousness mm -hmm. that's going to make us acceptable. Yeah. You're not going to do this on your own. In the world, it can't help you. Philosophers, those who think they're so smart that they have all the answers, we, we, under, we see how smart they are. Their answers fall flat on their face. But yeah. see, God does have the answer. Amen. We serve a wise Amen. God. Amen. Men may say they are good, but how does God see it? Their throat is an open sepulcher. Their tongues, they have used deceit. See, they, this is unacceptable. But it's, this is how we are apart from Christ. Sin causes this. We can't change it, but God has. If you've ever been around rotten meat, it has such a foul stench. That's how we are with God without Christ. But see, in Christ, we are a sweet-smelling aroma. Just as the smell of death can ruin anything in its presence, anything that it comes in contact with, Christ makes us a sweet smell to our God. Without the righteousness of God, all are against God. It doesn't matter what they say. All are self-centered. 
and cannot change it without Christ. When they, when they speak, it is with deceit, the poison of asp under their lips. Men will make excuses. They'll make excuses and they'll point at everybody else for why they have done what they've done. But God says it the way it is. This is how you are without, without Christ. This is the first thing that happened when sin came in, brother. When, when Adam sinned, the first thing he did is he used deceit in his speech. I'm going to show you how he did this. Adam went from no sin at all to pointing his finger at God. First thing he did. Mm -hmm. This is what sin caused. Now let me show you this. God says to Adam, Who told thee that thou was naked? That's a pretty simple question. Yeah. Hast thou eaten of the tree? Mm -hmm. These are yes or no answers here. Yeah. Amen. Wherein I command thee that thou shouldest eat? Mm -hmm. So what does... Adam do with this simple answer because sin had entered in sin had completely corrupted it doesn't take a long time brother yeah. for, for sin to do a work mm -hmm. it completely corrupts like that yeah. Adam pointed his finger at God mm -hmm. away from himself this is how flesh this is how flesh is this is how sin acts away from himself, and he, he turned it to God and said, it was the woman you gave me. You gave me that woman. Yeah. That wasn't my fault. Mm. Genesis 3, 11 through 12, not my fault. Mm -hmm. And that's why I sinned. So deceit right away. No fear of God. This is what sin does. When the truth is twisted and men say things that take the fault off of themselves and point it, the finger at God, it's like poison running through them. It start, it, death moves in. They can't, they're blinded. They can't see anymore. It, it causes them to look at God who's never, he's always been perfect, all his ways, merciful, to point the finger at God. The truth that God is right and all men are wrong. This is the truth, brother. God is always right Amen. in all his ways. Uh -huh. We don't question God. And if we don't understand something, let us just not understand it. And say, God, you are right in all your ways. Amen. And I would, I would just put my faith in you, mm -hmm. knowing that you're going to make it work out. Amen. God is right. If flesh goes unchecked, it will end with speaking against God. We will, you, brethren, if it, I'm not saying anybody here is dabbling in the sin. But sin will, he'll take you down a slippery path so fast your head will spin. If you're going to be playing around with sin, you're going to do things that you thought you would never do. Amen. Mouth filled with cursing and bitterness. You may hear people question God. Some go as far as saying that they're angry with God. This is a bad place to be. Amen. Our God is perfect in all his Amen. ways. He's never wrong. Mm. As bad as it gets, it's because of flesh mm. being able to just go rampant. Mm. So we're told, brethren, we're told to crucify the flesh. Amen. Jesus said, the spirit quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. Uh -huh. John 6, 36. So there's no question about it. We can already say, we give ourselves to you, Lord. Mm -hmm. We don't question you. Flesh must be crucified daily. Or this text that we're covering here, this is how we will end up. Right. Mm -hmm. You may be doing good today, but you're not going to be doing good for very long if you depart from the Lord. Mm -hmm. That's right. If you're giving yourself to something else, it won't take long. We won't be seeing you showing up in our meetings anymore. 
We've had, we've already experienced this, haven't we, brother? We've had people come up here and say things that we know that the Lord has opened their eyes and seen, and they're not here anymore. Destruction and misery. The way of peace have they not known. This is the nature of all flesh. There are different forms of it, I understand, different degrees, different levels, but it's all flesh, yeah. and it will not enter the kingdom of God. Amen. We must mortify our members which are upon the earth. It goes on fornication, uncleanness. Yeah. It's Colossians 3, 5 talks about this. Mortif just put it to death. Amen. Don't even play games with it. The wrath of God cometh on the ch children of disobedience, Colossians 3, 6. We do not want to justify ourselves to give, to give in to those things and then give an excuse. We, we want to say, Lord, I, I, I know without you who I am. I'm a wretch without you. I need you daily. I need your strength and power to continue on. We do not want to continue for a moment with our God. If flesh is unchecked, it will not stop at a certain point. See, this is a deception of the devil. Yeah, you're, you're, okay. you're doing fine. Hey, at least you're not as bad as the guy down there at the bar. Okay, you, you go to church for an hour or whatever. So, see, flesh does not have a problem with being under law. Mm -hmm. hey, it can go, go through the motions. It can do everything. But as long as it continues to, to be able to do what it wants to do. Uh -huh. See, this is what we mean by different degrees. Yeah. It must be crucified. You never want to get to the point where you hear of evil going on and thinking, well, at least I'm not like them. Because here's the, here's the goal, brethren. We want to be like God. And that's what God is doing in Christ Jesus. He's, met, he's given us his righteousness so that when we stand before him, we're righteous and holy and pure. Without blemish, without spot. The Spirit showing us here the capacity of the flesh. The flesh will blind men to the point that they will not fear God. But brethren, the fact that you do fear being before God without Christ Jesus, that's a work that God has done in you. God has done this. He softened your heart. He drew you. Yeah. He's placed you. And you, you do not want to draw back. Who can stand before God and live without the covering of Jesus Christ? No man can. We all need Jesus. No matter gen or ju gen Jew or Gentile, we all need Jesus. Yes. It's only by God's righteousness that we may be with our God. But the grace of God will make us stand. Yes, he will bring us all the way, brethren. You can have confidence in the fact that our God, not only is he a good and righteous and merciful God, but he is a powerful and wise God that knows exactly what you need. And he'll, he'll bring you all the way. Let me end with this, brethren. We do serve a merciful God that will not turn away from a heart that wants to please him. Amen. If you want to please him, he wants to make you pleasing. And he has the power and the ability to do that. So I say stand with the Lord and don't turn back. Thank you, brother. We have brother